Welcome to Central Moments. I'm so grateful that Pastor Don Tucker was able to lead us through the end of our study in the book of James last week. I was confined with a COVID diagnosis. Thank you for all of those of you who prayed for me. Fortunately, it was very mild and I'm back to full functioning and out in public again and uh, I'm grateful. But we, we do carry on our hearts those who are really struggling with this disease and may God give us grace. It's especially complicated with Thanksgiving week coming up and how we celebrate with family and who we're with and who we're not with. But I would like this week to focus on Thanksgiving and especially in these first few days leading up to Thanksgiving to talk about the power of praise because you'll find that God's presence in his praise always go together. We see this very vividly de demonstrated for us back in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. King David was moving the Ark of the Covenant to a tent in Jerusalem where it could settle there. He hadn't yet it would be his son Solomon who would build the temple, but he wanted a resting place for the Ark of the Covenant. God's covenant with people meant that he would dwell, his presence would dwell among people. And, and so the Ark of the Covenant represented God's tangible presence in the midst of his people. And as he brings the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem and sets it in its place, he then, according to verse 4 of 1 Chronicles 16, he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord. And what would ministering before this symbol of God's presence involve? Well, he tells us, us to extol, to thank, and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. There were people who, who David assigned to do nothing but honor and worship the Lord, to lift up praise and thanksgiving before him because his praise and his presence always belong together. And in verse 5, it said they were to play the lyres and the harps and Asaph was to sound the cymbals and Benaiah and Jehaziel, the priests, were to blow the trumpets regularly before the ark of the covenant of God. So you have voices, you have instruments and regularly God's praise was to be sounded in his presence. And verse 7 says, That day David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in this manner. And then begins an amazing hymn of praise that goes most of the rest of the chapter. But it starts like this, verse 8. Give praise to the Lord. We say this, this Thanksgiving week. We give praise to you, Lord, no matter what we're facing or where we are. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And even in our day, Jesus is building his church and he's preparing us for the day that he returns and he's working among the nations and he's working in our lives. And so this Thanksgiving week, we, we in his presence give him praise. Verse 9, sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all of his wonderful acts. Thanksgiving is the time where we as we ought to every day, all year, we say, Lord, thank you for your wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, verse 10. And let the hearts of those who seek the Lord, let them rejoice. Let them give place to joy. Why? Because the Lord, he's working among the nations. He's working in our lives. And he, through the death and resurrection of Jesus, has given us the gift of his presence in the new covenant in Jesus. His spirit is with us. We always have grounds to praise him and to worship him because, because we can live in his presence. And it's interesting that a few chapters later, David is laying the plans out for the, rebuild, for the building of the first temple in Jerusalem that his son will, Solomon will build. And in laying out the plans in 1 Chronicles 23, verse 5, it says 4,000 Levites are to be gatekeepers and 4,000 are to praise the Lord with musical instruments that I provided for that purpose. Can you imagine 4,000 Levites who Levites assisted the priest in the service of the temple? David set in order not only gatekeepers, but another 4,000 Levites to do nothing but constantly sound his praise in the midst of his presence. And so may we do that this Thanksgiving week. Our Father, we pray, praise you. We praise you in defiance of disease. We praise you in defiance of circumstances that put fear in our hearts. 
uh, in, in our world. And we thank you, Lord, that you are that great God. We make known this week and this day, we make known your praise and we give you thanks for all that you have done. We thank you. We're not people of fear. We thank you. We're not people of the world, but we can know you and your presence can fill us. And so, Lord, let that overflow in praise today to you. And all this week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.